So before we can reduce radicals, we need to understand exactly what are radicals, what do they mean. The reason we call it a radical and not simply a square root is because you can have different roots. All of these symbols are called your radical hats. And inside here is the root that you are looking for. This is the cubed root of a number. Oopsie. This is the fourth root of a number, and this is the fifth root of a number. If there is no number inside, it's understood to be the square root. Okay? Now, what does it mean? What are we asking for? If we are asking for the square root of a number, we want to know what number multiplied by itself two times gave me 25. Well, what number times itself twice or squared gives you 25? Okay. If we're looking for the cubed root of a number, we're now saying what number multiplied by itself three times gives me 27. Here it's 3, because 3 times 3 is 9 times another 3 is 27. The fourth root means that there is a number multiplied 4 times. The fourth root of 16 is 2. And the fifth root means what number multiplied by itself 5 times gives me 1. 1. Okay? Now, all of these were perfect roots. We had a, a perfect answer. Today, we're going to work on how do we simplify a radical when it's not a perfect root. If you're looking for the square root of something that's not a perfect square, how do we go about doing that? Well, the first thing you need to understand is that when we express radicals, we have to have them in simplest form. And the first thing about simplest form is you cannot have a factor of that number that is a perfect square under a square root. You've got to find it and take it out. So we're going to do factoring. Do you all remember the factor tree? Okay, but we're not going to do the factor tree because we're not in sixth grade anymore. We're going to do it in our head. All right. So let's talk about 50. And what we're going to do is we're going to break 50 down to all of its prime numbers, all of its prime factors. So 50 is 5 times 10. Okay, thinking in my head, I've got 5, which is prime, times 10. Well, can't 10 go down again? Okay. Try to group your like numbers together. Now, since I'm looking for the square root, I need to identify, are there any numbers under that radical hat that are being squared? Five is being squared, isn't it? So what's the square root of five squared? Five. Since I have a pair of fives, I can take a five out. Okay? Because five times five is... 25, and the square root of that is 5. Now, for the square root of 2, is 2 a perfect square? No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it under the radical. See, you can actually find the square root of 2. It's a decimal. It's an irrational number, which means it's a repeating decimal that keeps going and going and going. All right? But we're not going to write it as a decimal. We're going to keep this in radical form. Now, it's always good if we know how to check ourselves, correct? To see if you have correctly reduced a radical, you are going to, if this is a square root, you're going to square this outside number and then multiply it times what is left inside. And you should get what you started with, which is 50. Here? You can't put a square here because that's not correct. All right? This is our checking. 25 times 2 is 50, which means that I have simplified correctly. 
This, however, is your answer. Okay? I don't get how you took out the top. Okay, because let's do it this way. Isn't 50 25 times 2? Can you find the square root of 25? 5. Okay. But instead of writing 25, I broke that down further to this. Okay. This is 5 squared, which is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. As long as you have pairs of numbers... If you're looking for a square root, this is 2 squared. Well, what happened? What's the square root and squaring something? Aren't those inverse operations of each other? Like adding and subtracting. If I take 5, I add 2 to it, and then I subtract 2 to it. Have I changed the 5? No. Multiplying and dividing. If I take 5 and I multiply by 2 and then divide by 2, it's still what? It's still 5. So here, if I take this 2 and I square it and then turn around and take the square root, have I changed the 2? No. Okay? So 2 squared, square root is 2. Square root of 3 squared is 3. And the square root of 5 squared is 5. Now, what do I do with these things? I multiply them together. Okay? That was a little more than I wanted to go. But, now let's look at the square root of 40. If I ask you to simplify this radical, 40 is not a perfect square. What you're going to need to do is break 40 down. All right, well, let's do that. 40 is... 4 times 10. Let's start with smaller numbers. 4 times 10. Well, 4 is not prime, is it? 4 is 2 times 2. And 10 is 2 times 5. I want you to get in the habit of breaking it all the way down. Because when we're not dealing with square roots, we may have to look for groups bigger than 2. All right? Now, is there a number being squared? Right here, correct? 2 squared. What's the square root of 2 squared? 2. So I can remove a whole number 2 from under the radical because that was a perfect square. Now, what's left? Is that a perfect square? Say it with me. No. So what do you do with it? You multiply it back together and you leave it under the radical because it is not a perfect square. Simplifying radical expressions. We've got to make sure we don't have factors under here that are perfect squares. Yes? So after you list your um, pairs of numbers, you still have to go back and see the other numbers multiply Well, no. Because once you found your perfect, once you found your pairs, if you factored all the way down, then that's all you've got. You're just going to put the rest of them back together. All right, now look at this. Still taking 40, but this time we're looking for the cubed root of 40, which means instead of looking for a number being squared, I'm looking to see if there's a number that's being what? Cubed, which means does it appear three times. Well, is there a number that appears three times under there? Okay, so what's the cubed root of two cubed? Two. two. I have removed that from under the radical. You keep the cube. You keep the cubed inside the radical bracket, inside the radical hat. Okay, and what's left under the hat? Five. So the reduced answer to this is 2.